Hello and welcome to this tutorial on UML diagrams. In this episode we're going to create a use case diagram for a game. Um, for this we're going to be using a program called Dia. Um, don't laugh at the name. I It might actually be a Dia program but it's very beneficial for creating your UML diagrams. Okay, so last week in lesson we touched upon use case, use case diagrams essentially what the player uses within the game. It's a sort of a design overview. Okay, so in Dia, you'll see this tab here with flowchart assorted and UML. We want to be on UML for this. Okay, the first thing we need is our actor, which is a stick man, just here under actor. We just click in and we name this to player because the actor in our game is the player, what the player can use. Okay, so there he is. Okay, for this use case diagram, it's going to be focused on more of a shooting type game, so a first person shooter, um, top down shooter, etc. Okay, so one of the first use cases we're going to put in is navigating the main menu. So here, you next to the actor, you'll see the use case. Uh, option so I just want you to click on that and just click anywhere into the uh, space to select to put in a use case um, diagram okay our first use case is going to be navigate main menu like that okay and we're just going to move it closer to the play like so it's always good if use case sort of reads as a sentence so player can navigate main menu okay now navigate main menu is an association of player so what the player can navigate the main menu okay it's an as it's associated with the player so we need the straight arrow selected so on all these three options the line should just be straight okay if that is so you want to click on the line tool just here click on that and make and just draw a line from navigate main menu to the player I always like to try and make it as straight as possible like that excellent so now you should have your first use case so in our game there could be other associations of navigate main menu and what the player can do one of these can be view credits so view credits and the arrow would go from view credits to navigate main menu like so okay so the player can navigate the main menu and can view credits they can also select options okay again another association they can also load game like so they can also play the game like so Excellent. Okay, so from our play game, we can also control the player. So, control player. So, player can control character. Control character sounds better. Like so. Excellent. So, last week we went through the different arrow types needed and from control character we'll have some generalizations of control character so for example one of the generalizations will be move movement okay so movement is a generalization of control and character in a use case diagram you don't put all the different types of movement like 
left, right, north, south, etc. You just put movement, so it's generalized everything to do with movement from controlling character. And the generalization arrow is this one right here. Okay? And that goes from movement all the way up to control character, like so. Let's just make sure that's attached like that. There we go. So, other generalizations of controller character in a shooting game is shoot. Like so. Make sure that's attached. Others can be reload. That needs to be the other way, like so, there we go. Another could be swap weapon. Like so. And another could be melee. Like so. Excellent. Okay. So. That is pretty much it for our generalizations. Okay. Another one you could have. Or another association of playing game, rather, is pausing game. Okay. So, while you're playing the game, you can also... Pause game. And that needs to be the association arrow. Association arrow. Because it's an association of playing the game. Like so. Okay. A couple of more things we can go through. So selection options. They have some extensions. We went through the extension arrow the other week. Or the other day actually. So the extension arrow is just this right here. Okay, and we just go up like that. Actually, if I find the better one, so we've got the dotted line here, dotted line there, and we have this, oh, this R right here. Is that the right one? There we go. second that needs to be that one there we go so make sure it's set up like the following Oop, and if we just drag that line in there we go that's the correct one so an extension of select options can be adjust visuals Just sound. And adjust gameplay. Like so. All it needs is that arrow pointing to this one. Pointing to this one. pointing to this one and these are all extensions of selecting options so when you select these options these are extensions of the options menu okay so all you need to do then is write the following for these so before I do that I'm just going to move this slightly so you need to click on the text and click in here extends like that okay you need to do it for each one. So constraint is extends. Oop. It's not oop. So text. Got the wrong arrow there. My bad. One second. Delete. Delete. 
needs to be the line. There we go, that's better. Do, 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 do. And that needs the text. Extend. And extends. The other place where you could have an extends option is in your pause game. So the extensions of pause in games like return to main menu, select options, etc. They could be extensions of pause game. Okay. There is only one thing we are missing off this. And that is our subject boundary. Okay. So to do that, we can just go to flowchart up here, select the box, and our subject boundary goes across everything like that. And it just needs to send into the back. If I'm able to send it to the back, I should be able to. Do, 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 do. Delete that layers. Ah, there we go. Send it back. Does that work? Does that work? If I set flowchart sorted. Ah, there we go. Sorted might work. Yeah. So go to a sorted. Click the box there. Oop. Too big. Do 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 do. and just click objects, center back. So that your use case is in your subject boundary. And then it needs subject name. So subject name, just click, whoop. Actually, would have been best if I did the subject name there first. So subject name, halo for example, Sorted box. You can change the text size as well. And then objects center back. And that's how you do a use case diagram. A very simple version, but one that I would expect you to create. Okay, so this will help for your task, which is let me find out what the task is called. So it would be my last task of this term, and it is do, 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 do. create the elements. Okay, if you go to create the elements task, which is the last task on Moodle, you'll see that you have to create a use case diagram. So for this lesson, I want you to create your own use case diagram. I've just shown you how to create a shoot 'em up use case diagram I want you to create one for your own game idea okay if you need help just ask but that is how you set up a use case diagram in Dyer this shouldn't take you more than an hour you also need to look back on last week's presentation and have a look at how to create use case descriptions I will also go through this in lesson as well okay so thank you for watching bye for now